Hi, everybody. It is June 12, 2021. It is based on my research, based on doing this for 12 years, based on an awful lot of events that took place last year, events that are taking place today, that our most important um, agenda that is taking place in the United States is critical race theory, the divide and conquer based on race here in the United States. You know, we've watched mainstream media, their headlines, they're talking about, oh, it's going to be a very violent summer. Now, I think an awful lot of people are waking up now. We don't have enough that are speaking out about uh, critical race theory and this divide and conquer uh, between the black and white. You know, make it very simple. You know, it's white versus non-white, but it's really white versus black. Um, and the similarities between what took place under Mao, Mao's China, but it also has taken place in an awful lot of countries, and it seems to be the same playbook that they use. Now, I think a lot of people are waking up, and I think they're rushing through rushing through this race agenda. If we don't do anything, you can kiss all the freedom that you have right now, you can kiss it goodbye. If we don't unite and take on the real enemy and stop fighting one another, we can kiss away all our freedom, which includes our private property, our right. Well, we, we see the First Amendment being destroyed, our free speech. Now, there are so many people who have experienced exactly what is taking place right now in the United States. They have been speaking out. Is anybody taking seriously what these people are saying. Okay, I posted this video on my channel just a few minutes ago. Yugoslavian woman, woman's, well, I've got to edit that, uh, warns Americans, what happened to us is happening to you, unite or lose freedom. I'm going to play a few minutes of what this woman is saying. I hope that you watch the full video, which is on my channel, and circulate it. Circulate this information. Please take very seriously what these, what these people are saying that have lived through their communist takeover, their warnings to us. You know, if we don't begin to really, you know, not only think but feel what is happening in our country? We have a very bloody war coming. And unfortunately, because most Americans are at one another's throats, we will lose that war. Not so long ago, I was a lab mouse of dictators in my country. That country was Yugoslavia. Rather than giving you lessons about history of my country, I want to give you the timeline of the events which led to an extremely bloody war and dissolution of Yugoslavian Federacy. I will leave it to you to make conclusions about similarities with recent events in the United States. In the 1989, the fall of the Berlin Wall marked the victory of the free world over tyrannical monstrosity of communism across the Europe. However, Yugoslav communists didn't feel like letting go of their precious powers. Since the climate in Europe was extremely anti-communist at the time, they knew they needed a new strategy, an ideology that would seduce the masses and keep the power in their hands. So they come up with a very clever idea, to rebrand the communism in Yugoslavia and to change its name into socialism. Not any type of socialism, but a very special type, the national socialism. Sounds familiar? The playbook they used to progress with their agenda was already tested in Nazi Germany. To establish National Socialism, you must first install hatred in people. 
In order to create genocidal levels of hatred, you must divide people of one country in well-defined groups. In other words, you must create tribal or group think. This can be achieved in different ways. You can divide people by ethnicity, by race, by religion. You can let your imagination go wild. Since Yugoslavs were white and practically indistinguishable among themselves, the only card they could play was the religion card. Yugoslavia was very mixed religion-wise, and we had Orthodox Christian Serbs, Catholic Croats and Slovenes, and Muslim Bosnians. A perfect starting position. In the next phase, you must start making such social policies so terrible that will inevitably lead to the countless individual disadvantages. When the consequences of such government policies become obvious, you must start claiming that the cause of those inequalities is nothing but discrimination and hatred of one group towards another, and naturally, you must start screaming that those inequalities must be corrected by favoring the oppressed, discriminated group over the oppressor group. Sound familiar? Please watch her video. I will link to it below. Listen to the whole 15 minutes. And essentially what she is saying is, what happened in Yugoslavia is happening now. It is happening now. Now, I don't agree with uh, everything that everyone says, but the playbook, which has been spoken of by an awful lot of people, Naomi Wolf, The End of America, The Ten Steps to a, a, a Takeover, a, a communist takeover, a, a, a Lily Tang Williams. And, okay, let me go into it now. This woman, who also grew up under Mao, is, just like Lily Tang Williams, and a whole lot of Chinese Americans who escaped the communism in China, who came to our country, they're recognizing, oh, this is not good. They're recognizing the divide and conquer, and we couldn't do it. Uh, how could we do it with religion? Um, there, we are the melting pot. There, there are... I'd, I'd say every religion in the world exists here in the United States. The truly, you know, and I was thinking about this, we can't do it on class. We couldn't because we didn't have a very, um, you know, demarcated class line. You know, we had the middle class and we had the upper middle class and we had the lower middle class and then we had the lower class and then race. Now race has been with us from the start and that discussion of race has been ongoing from the start of our country. So when you hear people talk about, well, critical race theory is really good because it allows for open discussion, honest discussion, that's what they're saying. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. They're using, they're using race to divide us to get us to hate one another, and I just hope to God no one goes there, because if you go there, then you will prove that you are just a manipulated, uh, mindless puppet of those who want all power to control your life. You literally become a useful idiot. Please don't go there. So. You know, I mean, Yugoslavia, it was religion. China, it was class. Okay. Um, I just want to uh, uh, let the American people know that what's going on in our school and in our country is really a replay of the Cultural Revolution um, in China. And uh, I, I want people to see there's uh, similarities, and the similarities are terrifying. They use the same... Uh, ideology and same methodology, even the same vocabulary, and with the same goal. The uh, uh, ideology is uh, cultural Marxism, and uh, we were divided 
uh, into groups as oppressor and oppressed. And here we use race, and there they use class. And uh, um, the, the, uh, um, the people here who have a different review were labeled racist. But uh, in the Cultural Revolution, the label is counter-revolutionary. So it is a hat that fits all. And once the hat is on your head, your life is ruined. And the, the tech, uh, uh, methodology is also very similar. It's cancel culture. We basically cancel the whole Chinese civilization pre-communism. And we changed our school names, street names, store names. We changed even our personal names. My name is Xi, and I was named after the city I was born, Xi'an. Xi means West. It also refers to the imperialism. So I wanted so bad to change my name because I want to be more uh, communist. I'm glad my parents convinced me not to. And the vocabulary is even this, uh, the same, wokeness. And uh, to be specific, we use class wokeness. In Chinese, it's, uh, it is 阶级觉悟. Your level of uh, um, wokeness determines uh, your chance to get promotion or to get benefit. And who decides your level of uh, wokeness? It is the party leaders. Yeah, and, yeah. And, uh, and, 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 and you and, speak. And you now, anyone who is on the left who suddenly, oh my God, it's Fox News, I'm not going to listen to this, you don't have a brain that, that works in a, uh, well, it's not healthy. Forget all of that. You will never see this woman on any of the left mainstream media. Why? Because this is a left communist agenda. She will not have a slot on uh, MSNBC or CNN. So people have to start getting out of that dichotomous thinking. And people have to start, you know, stop with the, um, oh, this person's a shill because they said this or you go for truth. That's it. Forget about left and right. Forget about Republican and Democrat. Forget about black and white. You go for truth. And if you have uh, some uh, foundation of all of the agendas that are taking place, if you have a foundation of knowledge of those agendas, basic foundation, then you begin to recognize who is speaking the truth and who is not. So I don't want to hear this, oh my God, you know, she posted a video on Fox News. Oh, she's just like, you know, mainstream media. She's a shill. She's a... Stop it. Enough. Those comments, first of all, influence other people who don't have their thinking quite right. So stop, please. Truth is all that matters. And what this woman just said needs to be heard. If you can't, she spoke up at a school board meeting. I posted that on my channel in one of my videos on um, the series of Is China Preparing to Attack America? Now, it's not only China, and it's not only communist. It's the Zionists. It's the Jesuits. It's evil versus good. So when you are coming across a video and somebody is pointing out Ha, huh, similarities between Mao's China and, hmm, I don't want to say Biden's America, but the similarities of what is taking place here are very close to what took place during the Cultural Revolution in China. Don't do the, you know, I don't understand why, you know, you're saying it's China when it's the Zionists or I don't understand why you're saying, look, yeah, it's, it's almost like a, amalgamation, a amalgamation of all evil <laughs> taking place here in the United States.
So I recognize it's not just China, but also recognize it's not just the Zionists. And frankly, if there's any one group that is kind of using as puppets all the other groups, I would say it's the Jesuits. But that's not anything that I can prove. It's just based on my research. Now, let's listen to the last um, minute of what this woman has to say, because it's very important. And they are achieving a success that I don't like, hence the reason I'm focusing on this. I just want people to know that the freedom is fragile and uh, we can lose it any time if we don't defend it. And there's a lot of uh, um, Chinese Americans who have the same experience and share my point of view. And I know that more and more people will ste uh, step up and share their stories and tell the American people criti uh, critical race theory is not anti-racism. It itself is racist. It's divisive, it's destructive, and it is dangerous. And she is absolutely right. You know, <laughs> boy, when I come across some of these headlines, I get very, very upset, and I need to speak against what people like Joy Reid, now I can't believe that people actually listen to the vitriol that is spewed out of this woman's mouth. MSNBC's Joy Reid mocks parents who say opposing critical race theory doesn't make them racist. It does. It's just another example of Republicans turning kids into a wedge issue, really. This is where she says this. Because I do not want critical race theory taught to my children in school does not mean that I'm a racist, damn it. <laughs> it's a, actually, it does. It's just another example of Republicans turning kids into a wedge issue, just like their politically motivated attacks on transgender youth who just want to play sports. Because Any American who listens to this woman and actually believes what she says is, I'm, there, I don't, I don't get it. I, I honestly don't understand it, but they obviously are um, very indoctrinated. They have no interest in the truth, and they're like gung-ho for the divide and conquer. This is a race baiter, a hustler, a liar, and she can let, this is mainstream media, Americans, don't you understand at this point that mainstream media is the government propaganda outlet. It's government propaganda, just like this woman from Yugoslavia spoke of. The mainstream media in Yugoslavia propagated all of this propaganda to get people to hate one another. And you can't recognize it now, and I'm not talking to you guys. I know that you know it. But what else can we do but just continually try to reach people that these people are the evil that is, they're encouraging the hate between one another. I'm tired of it. I'm angered by it. And what this woman just said, because people are against critical race theory does not make them a racist. Please start using your brain. That was a gift from God. But a whole lot of people don't recognize it as a gift. A whole lot of people don't recognize that you have to work that brain in order to get correct, accurate, clear thinking. And I'm tired of people being, you know, just chastised, mocked by our mainstream media reporters. Every American should be outraged 
by just what this woman said. If you're not outraged by what she said, you are, you've just been so programmed, programmed, you know, to be on the left and to believe everything that the left says. It's such phenomenally low thinking and dangerous thinking. So I came across this last night, The Intercept, please. You know, The Intercept, Glenn Greenwald was a co-founder of The Intercept. He left The Intercept because during the uh, Biden scandal, uh, when he was campaigning and all of that came out about Hunter Biden's laptop, oh, The Intercept decided, you can't post any of this. The, we've got an awful lot on the left that consider, that, that actually proclaim that they're, oh, we're not mainstream media, we are alternative news. No, they're not. The Intercept now is mainstream media, just like Democracy Now!, Amy Goodman. And of course, when Glenn Greenwald started showing up on Fox, when he was the darling, you know, of Amy Goodman, certainly, he was constantly, you know, on, not constantly, but he was on Democracy Now! an awful lot as a guest. Amy Goodman no longer, no longer invites Glenn Greenwald because she's pushing the mainstream media narrative. And anybody who, you know, finally wakes up to, okay, uh, if I can't post the truth, something's wrong here. So Glenn Greenwald leaves, and where now does he have an outlet to speak the truth about what is taking place? Fox. Tucker Carlson. Uh, and then you're branded. You know, I saw this headline. Uh, is Glenn Greenwald now the master of right-wing Media, that's what they do. You got to stay, you know, that dichotomous thinking, which is unhealthy thinking, well, they're going to keep you in it. They will keep you in it. They'll do everything to keep you in it. Nothing outside. You know, it's the left versus the right. It's Republican versus Democrat. But now those with a working brain cell in their brain on the left should recognize that why are they now going after Republicans the way they are? Because this agenda has been going on for a long time. We never ever held anybody accountable for any of their lies and we're at the end stage. We are at the end stage. So when you hear mainstream media and, uh, or see the headlines, it's going to be a violent summer. It's going to be a violent summer. It's going to be a violent summer. You better take very seriously what is taking place because they are setting up Americans for that violent summer. And it's the, it's the race war that's on its way. Oh, it, it, yeah. Manufactured, of course. But unless Americans begin to use that brain that they have in their head, that they give up, you know, the laziness. It is a laziness. You know, they begin to activate thinking for themselves instead of allowing mainstream media and government leaders like Pelosi and Biden and all AOC and all of these people that, that are so profoundly, uh, they put out such idiocy. They, they are literally saturating us in such obvious lies. And that's what's so upsetting to me, the obviousness of everything that's taking place. Um, which, which to me, well, when it becomes so obvious, when you have so many Americans just either silent or going along 
with everything that they're hearing, this official narrative of you know, how racist this country is, that's what's really moving us along. That's what allows the acceleration of this race agenda in our country. And the obvious is it's evident that we have come so far. You know, there was a, maybe a short period before Obama when there wasn't any talk about race. People were just living their lives. You know, we have black Americans today. In my own lifetime, the progress has been stunning. And no other country, no other country in history has literally reversed itself on slavery. No other country you know, has, has accomplished what this country has done in terms of the race issue and slavery. No, we're not going to, you know, talk about that. We're just going to continually gaslight Americans with this, we're racist, we're racist, nothing has changed, everything has changed. So much has changed. Are there racist Americans? Of course. Will there always be racist people in the world? Yeah. You know, it's up to the individual to work out that disease that they have within their own self. No government policy can ever eradicate racism. Mostly white have been storming school board meetings. Really? Now, okay, across the state of Georgia, Georgia, I believe, just banned critical race theory. Florida banned critical race theory. I think Tennessee did. Um, why are... What, you know, there are so many people against critical race theory. That should lead those to at least wonder, why are all these people against it? And yet we have people like Joy Reid who could actually mock those against it. Maybe those against it have, well, a reason to be against it. Well, that'll be my next video because I can't do these long videos anymore. I'm just too tired. Watch my next video to see. You know, she's mocking a white woman. It's white parents against critical race theory. That's not true. It is not true. Now, will most be white? We still are the majority uh, in terms of the percentage of population. So yeah, but oh, there's an awful lot of black parents who are enraged with critical race theory. A lot of black American scholars that you're not gonna see them on mainstream media. And we better start listening to the scholars instead of listening to, well, yeah, people like this. You want to walk the low road? Keep listening to her. You want to try to mm, get off that low road? Look up. Look up and you'll see an awful lot of people, scholars, academics, and parents and an awful lot of people who actually critically think, oh yes, and they're black Americans fully against critical race theory because it is so damaging. It is so damaging, it's, it's beyond, but it's abuse. So that will be my next video. Thank you for listening. Please circulate information I link to pretty much everything. You don't have to circulate my videos, but please circulate the information. It's the least you can do. And it doesn't matter who wins this war. What matters is what you do on a daily basis. 
to try to uh, fight against a communist takeover, the New World Order. Call it what you want. Call it, you know, and call them what you want, the elitists, the globalists, the... You fight for the freedom, if not for yourself, for the younger generation. They deserve it. And just think at the very end, if you are asked, what did you do to try to fight this hell we are living now? I hope you will have an answer. And I hope you will be honest and not lie.